¿Qué tal amigos? ¿Cómo están? Una nueva edición aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Esto es Auto 060. Tenemos un show bastante interesante, como siempre. Muchas entrevistas, eh, muchos test drives. Está, seguimos viajando por el mundo. Estuvimos la semana pasada en Las Vegas, ahora en Puerto Rico, probando autos de mini. Y uh, esta semana vamos a analizar un estudio. We're going to switch back, back to English because uh, we're going to talk to John Osborne. Uh, he's the research director of J.D. Power and Associates, who has a, a very interesting key f uh, findings about a new marketing study about how uh, we are buying cars here in the United States. How are you, John? I'm fine. How are you, sir? Excellent. Thank you very much for your time and uh, sharing this information with, with us, which is very, very interesting. I mean, uh, a lot of, um, car manufacturers put a lot of money in, uh, and, uh, and resources into like, how they, they market their cars to us and... Uh, It's very interesting to see the, these key findings from uh, J.D. Power and Associates. Can you talk a little bit about the, the general study, please? Sure. The uh, issue study looks at the entire shopping process for new vehicle buyers. There's actually kind of three components to it. So we survey actual new vehicle buyers and ask them about the other vehicles that actually shot for the dealership but decided not to buy. Okay. So we refer this to as rejection. Okay. Why Asking the shopper why they decided not to buy this vehicle. And we also asked them about other vehicles in the segment which they purchased, but they decided not to buy. So, example, they bought a Ford Fusion, and then we asked them, well, why didn't you consider the Honda Accord or the Toyota Camry? Yeah. And then we asked them the reasons they did not consider or avoided these models. And finally, we asked why they bought the vehicle they did. These are the reasons that motivated them to buy the vehicle they actually ended up buying. You know, very interesting. So, I mean, like the amount of information that is now uh, flowing uh, through Internet, uh, uh, because uh, years ago, I mean, uh, not very long time ago, we didn't have these uh, resources, at least for the general public. Right, right to our fingertips. Obviously, uh, the majority of people are using the Internet before they're making decisions, even before they go out and actually shop for the dealership. Yeah, that's one, so, of, one, that's one of the findings in the study, right? Like a lot of people, uh, I believe uh, 81% have said that they look in the Internet, which can be very useful, but also can be a, a pretty, uh, I'm not going to say confusing, but there's uh, way too much information sometimes. I think I, I read in one study recently that people visit a, up to 18 pages sometimes to, while they're shopping for a car. With, it's a lot of information to digest. Oh, I'm sure. Um, but it, it saves time in the long run and pretty much ensures you're going to buy the uh, vehicle that you really want. It'll meet your needs to the highest degree. Yeah. So, so it's a good thing. Uh, yeah, no, good absolutely. And, and I think it's, uh, I mean, eventually I think uh, when, when the, 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 the market is more mature and technology and people are adapted more, uh, probably it's going to affect the way dealers uh, <laughs> do their business, right? Because people are going to be able to configure the car and pretty much order it if they are patient enough. I mean, here in the Oh, uh, we'd like to see the industry do that eventually. Yeah. So, uh, John, uh, can you please tell us uh, what are, are, are the, the, the other findings in the study? I think uh, again, lo, um, domestic manufacturers are doing pretty good in some aspects, right? Yeah, well, one of the interesting things we found this year is we added a new question, a new purchase reason, and we asked about technology. And we did find that domestic buyers were more likely to buy their vehicle due to advanced technology more so than the import buyers. And, of course, there's... There's a lot of uh, distinctions between technology. Technology isn't really limited to just what's in front of you or what's in the console. Um, we often think of technology as being Bluetooth technology and pairing up the smartphone, audio. But there's a lot of other technology features that we haven't really delved into. There's gas-saving technology, driving technology. Oh, okay. And there's actually a lot of technology under the hood. So when people – we think of it as Bluetooth. In fact, virtually all – Vehicles. About 90% of the vehicles are now are sold with uh, Bluetooth technology and, and smartphone pairing, etc. So it, it actually extends beyond just that. Yeah, I, but I do think the domestics are, are chasing um, technology yeah. more so than other brands. Every every brand has to you have to stand for something in the marketplace. Um, Porsche and BMW more or less own performance, and Honda and Toyota are stand for reliability. So you have to stand for something, and I think um, domestics are doing a good job of positioning themselves and contacting their vehicles with a lot of technology to yeah. win over consumers. Yeah, is this also a reaction, because, for example, to the Koreans, because Hyundai and Kia have been uh, doing, I think, a pretty good job about packaging the cars. I think, for example, uh, 
some of the cars like the Acera is like $35,000 with everything. I mean, there are no options. It has everything that you can think right, of. Right, right, right. Uh, like keyless entry, Bluetooth, as you mentioned, navigation, all those things. So in, in that sense, I think that's the way the market is going, and that's uh, probably what the domestic uh, manufacturers are reacting to. I, I think so. I mean, now that quality is really a non-issue, there's really no bad vehicles on the marketplace. So yeah. that's that's not a reason to avoid a vehicle. Yeah. So now it's about the comfort and the technology and the features. So that's that's where the that's where you win over customers. And, and of course the looks, the no, styling is a yeah, key absolutely. I, th- I think uh, that that still is a, it's a pretty a pretty big reason, right? I mean, uh, as as we were saying, like uh, manufacturers uh, spend a lot of money uh, in their marketing campaigns and ads. But it, at the end, it's like if you like it and you can afford it. And if, on top of that, it has like all the toys, even better. But like. I guess uh, people are still, as you said, like Porsche. If you're gonna buy a Porsche, you're gonna buy a Porsche <laughs> anyhow. Right, right, right. So, uh, so other things. Uh, what, is there any particular technology, as you mentioned, like uh, that people are, are are leaning into more in the domestic vehicles? Uh, we didn't really get into exactly what they meant by technology, and we don't know if there's any trending responses to this. This is the first time we've ever asked this question. So next year we'll be able to tell a lot more. Uh, about what that means to them, technology, and what it is doing to the market, if it's really actually winning over buyers to domestics or not. Um, you mentioned an, an, import, an important thing that's actually validated by data. The number one and two reasons why you avoid certain models, the number one reason is exterior look or design. It, obviously, if you don't like the look of a vehicle, you're not willing to consider it. Yeah. But the second reason to avoid a vehicle is it costs too much money. So those are the big fundamental you know, price and look. Those yeah. are the big differentiators in the marketplace okay. uh, when it comes to shopping. Absolutely. And uh, gas gas price and guys, uh, mileage is still one. I, I'm so very, very high in the list, right? I mean, even though, as you mentioned, technology is getting into that. I mean, we have the Mazda SkyTech thing. Uh, Volvo just introduced, like, the they're going to just build four-cylinder engines with turbochargers and superchargers and all that. So, uh, But fuel economy is still very high in the list, right? Oh yes, it's it's really king. Uh, ever since the gas prices surpassed three dollars a gallon back in about 2011, it's the number one purchase reason for uh, non-premium models. Um, that's the most influential reason why I bought my car is gas mileage. For, for free, premium brands, it's more about performance and quality of workmanship and image, not so much about price. Yeah. Gas mileage. And uh, is there any any findings in terms of uh, selecting uh, regular gas uh, cars versus diesels or even like hybrids or electrics? Uh, is there a breakdown on that in that aspect? Uh, we do have that, and of course, people buy hybrids or electric vehicles for the environmental reasons and and to save gas. But we really haven't seen that market take off. Um, you know, back to the old adage where you couldn't pay me enough to do something. Well, we can't pay them enough to do buy these vehicles. Well, the government will subsidize your purchase by $7,500, and still this market really hasn't taken off. It's a very, very small percent of the overall market, maybe 3, 3%. Yeah. But the technology is there, and you have to be there because it will be the future. So even though manufacturers might be losing money right now making some electric vehicles or hybrids, uh, you got to invest in that technology now because if you don't, you may uh, find yourself out in the cold in uh, you know five to ten years. Yeah, and that, like the new uh, the new regulations for the the cafe standard, uh, the average uh, mileage for manufacturers is pushing uh, technology a lot in that sense too, right? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, they so, have to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean it's kind of uh, interesting to see because I mean if you talk to some engineers, uh, and I don't know if they've been completely honest. Uh, some of them don't really know because it's a lot. I think it's what fifty-five by twenty twenty-five. Uh, so I mean, it, it, it's a it's a very high high target. Yes, I, it's, it is a little bit odd that the government can impose this type of um, mandate on the consumers because that that forces us to buy cars. Uh, we're all look, we're all looking for smaller cars, um, certainly compared to ten years ago, yeah. and we're all concerned about gas mileage. Now, is that really we can only buy what they make, and the manufacturers are tending to make smaller cars. So, you know, it's it's, it's kind of a, a dilemma there. Yeah. 
But I think they're, they're, they're coming up with uh, great ideas. For example, they just at the Detroit Auto Show, they showed a new F-150 with aluminum structure, which is, they say, is going gonna, is gonna to save about 20% of in gas mileage. And in that segment, it's really, really important. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, Ford's with the Echo Boost, and uh, their Ram is tell, uh, telling themselves, touting themselves as having the, the best college. So gas mileage is important to everybody, even, even full-size truck buyers. So Yeah. So we're talking with John Osborne, Research Director of J.D. Power and Associates. And, John, uh, you said that this avoider study uh, was done, uh, what, 29,000 owners of, of uh, new car uh, uh, purchases? That's, a, that's right. Wow, that's a, that's a uh, really they, big study, huh? These are, they bought in um, April and May of 2013. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, can, can you please uh, – so this, this, the findings of the study are available for everybody. You can go on a web page uh, so they can look for what's going on there. Yes, uh, jdpower.com. There's a you can look at the press release, and we also have a lot of other uh, vehicle information on that side as well. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation that uh, you ask what car did they they didn't select. Is there uh, and, and you said in general more domestic than uh, than uh, imports, but is there a brand uh, or one manufacturer that stands out? I don't, we only have one minute. Sorry, but uh, go ahead. Uh, no, actually, people uh, tend to. Uh, Avoid uh, M- domestics. The people that buy imports and avoid domestics, they still have concerns about reliability and poor quality and depreciation, even though those uh, largely have been uh, alleviated through quality yeah. improvements for the domestics. So it's really a non-issue, but in some people's mind, it's still out there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, John Borney from J.D. Power and Associates. Very interesting information about this, uh, the study, what, uh, the way we're buying cars here in the United States. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Bueno, esa fue la información, la entrevista con John Osborne de J.D. Power and Associates para analizar las razones por las cuales eh, los eh, consumidores aquí en Estados Unidos están comprando eh, vehículos nuevos y por qué están prefiriendo últimamente vehículos de fabricación eh, nacional o de eh, marcas eh, nacionales en contra de de los importados. Así que, muy interesante, eh, vamos a poner la información en Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060, y no se vayan que esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota, ya regresamos con más información de la industria de los autos.